I am 12 and a half. 12 and a half. Is it important to be that half? Yeah. But at the same time, you have a life that's very different from most 12 and a half year olds. I was about seven and a half when my life changed. I became sick and the doctors at first didn't know what it was. They thought it was just like a cold or a virus. And then when that didn't go away, they kept on doing blood testing. Um, they found acute lymphoblastic leukemia, ALL, in my bone marrow. My mom explained to me what cancer was. I knew I was gonna lose my hair. I knew like there was gonna it was gonna be hard and it was it wasn't just normal cold or right. were you scared? Yes, I was scared but I also just didn't know what to think at the time. I was young and during my first round of treatment, I asked a lot of questions. I always wanted to know what they were going to do to me. I always had to be in control of the situation. I had to know what was going on. Have you always been somebody who likes to be in control, or did it happen after you were diagnosed? I have I think I've always been <laughs> someone who likes to be in control. For the next two and a half years, Stella her family and her doctors did all they could to control her cancer. The chemotherapy treatments were intense and aggressive. As anticipated, Stella lost her hair and her body became bloated with the powerful anti-cancer drugs. But at the end of the day, all was well as on June 22, 2014, Stella officially completed her treatments. That celebration extended to a year and a month later when Stella was officially given the all clear to only return to the hospital for monitoring every other month. After more than three years of life defined by needles, IV bags, and debilitating treatments, Stella was once again a kid again for one whole month. My doctor like knelt down next to my bed and she told me, you know, Stella, your came, bone marrow results came back. I'm like, okay. And she's like, you have cancer again. And at the time, like, my parents were like, you can yell, scream, and do whatever you want, but I just felt defeated. I was sad. Did you cry? Yeah, I okay. cried. Yeah, but there was a point where I just couldn't cry anymore, so. I shook it off. <laughs> um, there was a contest, and it was, this is how I shake it off. And you do write about what you shake off and how you do it. And I wrote in about how I shake off leukemia by, um, well, my relapse by listening to Taylor Swift, cuddling with my cat. Um, I donated over $1,500 to other like childhood cancer charities. 1300 of that was from duct tape like sales. I made like duct tape bows with hair clips attached. So, and um, duct tape pencils and pens. Where do you sell these things? At craft fairs like um, Kids Biz at Canal Fest. Little did Stella know that over 45,000 children had submitted entries to Scholastic's Shake It Off contest. But as this plucky young girl had already proven in her battle against cancer, impossible odds represented nothing more than words. Stella, remember that contest we entered to meet Taylor? Well, we won and I'm like, oh my gosh, mom, are you serious? I was speechless and I couldn't stop smiling. So you got to go to the concert as well as meet her? Yes. Was the concert what you imagined it could be? Yes, she always puts on a great show. I went to her Speak Now concert with Carly's Club. Okay. That was one of the, Camp Good Days and Carly's Club are two of the organizations I've donated to because they helped me and I wanted to other kids to have a chance to experience like amazing things because I mean if you're gonna have to go through all the bad stuff you might as well go through some good stuff too 
have a little fun on the way. <laughs> want to try and like help out people and like raise awareness of childhood cancer and stuff like that. Do you think you will become someone who speaks out and who tries to make a difference on a national level, like really step forward? That would be amazing if I could. Yeah, I would want to do that. You say, if I could, do you think that you have the ability to make that happen in any way? Yes, I do. I mean, if I could write an essay and be picked out of 45,000 people, I mean, I think I could. I think I can do anything I set my mind to. Do you ever get tired of talking about it and thinking about it and living it day in and day out? Um, talking about it? No, because I, when I talk about it, I want to inspire other people and I want to help out other people that are going through it and just be there for them. Why? Why do you want to do that? Because other people were there for me and like I have friends that like some of the hardest parts of going to treatment is seeing people not make it. And I have friends who have not made it, and but they have helped me. And I want to be just like them. I want to help other kids and other adults and anyone that I can. My mom, she's been a big supporter. My whole family has. My mom, my dad, and my brother of like, they support me in everything I want to do. And they've been amazing and I can't thank them enough.